Good evening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Teaching Through Times and Seasons on Firehouse TV. I'm glad you're with me tonight. And because we are right on the verge of Rosh Hashanah, I thought it was a good time to talk about this specific season that we're going into. Um, we are actually still continuing the series of the Great Communion Revival, so we'll get back to that. But And we'll even touch on that a little bit tonight. Some of what we'll talk about tonight will be review from recent um, things that we've discussed and some seasons that are just, it's a continuation of what we're in and it needs to be reemphasized in this moment. And then some of it will be new, it'll be different. So let's look at some of the characteristics of this particular season that we're in. And so characteristics of this season. Now, here's something that we have discussed. Um, in fact, pretty much everything on this page right here is stuff that we've already talked about. So we've talked about the fact. And for me, this is the emphasis, honestly, of this coming year is that in 2023, God is calling his people to truly step into their authority that was given to them in John 20, 23, when the Lord Jesus said, whosoever sins you forgive are forgiven and whoever sins you retain are retained. And he is calling us to a place to release people from the weight of their sins so that there is a level of of um, darkness that is removed from them. And they can, in fact, come to a place of being able to hear the gospel and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have the power to do that. So, so there's different levels of this. Um, obviously, we'll talk about this a little bit, but, but one is we have to clearly forgive those who have sinned against us. But I just want to be clear, that's not what this passage is talking about. We must do that. We have to do that for our own selves. We have to do that. Just that's that's the walk of Christianity. We must forgive. We cannot, absolutely cannot hold unforgiveness and walk the Christian walk. You just can't do it. But not only that is that we have the power then to release the United States from um, sin, such as, such as, since Roe v. Wade has now been reversed, we can release forgiveness to the nation for the sins of abortion that have been committed up to this point. That removes a certain level of darkness that exists over the nation, and it allows people to come into a place where they can, in fact, um, really receive the gospel and really come to a place of true repentance. So for me, releasing forgiveness in this next season and learning what that means and learning to be able to um, bring freedom to those around us, bring freedom to people groups, um, release forgiveness even into the land so that some of the uh, natural disasters and such that happen as a result of sin in the ground, in the land, some of that can be avoided when we step into our authority and do what the Lord told us to do and release forgiveness. That is actually part of our job, part of our task. And so that to me is, is just a really my primary focus in this next season and what I want to learn to walk in. In, in a greater level than ever before. Now, the very, very first, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the very first um, episode that I ever did of Times and Seasons was talking about the Shemitah season. And, and I really heard from the Lord um, in regards to the Shemitah season when 5782 began. Now we're getting ready to launch into 5783. Um, but when the Lord talked to me about that, and you can go back and watch that video if you missed it. He was saying that this is not just a Shemitah year. Yes, 5782 is a Shemitah year, but this isn't only a Shemitah year. In fact, it's an extended Shemitah season. And I feel like that's so helpful. It has been so helpful in my life um, through this past year to recognize what season we're in and that a lot of the things that have been going on are a result of that. And first of all, for those of you that have heard 
um, quite a bit about the Shemitah season. You've probably heard a lot about it from Jonathan Kahn and others, and, and you may relate the Shemitah to a curse. And, and I know that there has been curses released because of the sin of the nation and um, the nations, but I want to emphasize that in the scriptures, the Shemitah is given as a blessing for the people of God. So please hear that the Shemitah season is a blessing. And yes, it does mean that there's going to be interruptions in things such as our regular work schedule, that there will be interruptions in, in business as usual. There'll be interruptions economically because the Shemitah was about all of that, right? In the Shemitah season, just in case you didn't catch that, in, in a Shemitah year, the people were told not to plant crops, to release others from debt that they may owe against them. And they, since they didn't plant crops, they were just going to eat whatever grew naturally in the field. But not only them, everyone in the community could come and they could eat of whatever grew in their field. So it was a year that they had to learn to trust God in a completely new level. And that, in fact, is what the Shemitah is about. It's learning to trust God. So when those interruptions come, and, and why I want to reemphasize this so much, is, as I said, it's been very helpful for me in our household. There's been so many interruptions and the Lord would remind me, this is, this is a Shemitah season. You can trust me to provide. And that when you are obedient in the Shemitah season, when you honor God in that Shemitah season, then it, it causes an increase in a blessing to come into your life. So please see that the Shemitah season is a blessing. Don't waste the times of interruption. The Shemitah is meant to be a season of rest. And so when these things come that interrupt our normal schedules, which we have been experiencing truly since 2020, correct? And I believe we will see more interruptions um, over the next several years. Then you take, you embrace that and take advantage of that to be able to press into the Lord, to rest physically. And um, even the land was able to rest in the Shemitah year. The animals that were normally used to plow were able to rest. There was a divine rest that fell over the land during the Shemitah. So please recognize that what the enemy might mean for evil in these days that cause economic uh, interruptions, that cause interruptions in your schedule, that cause interruptions maybe in your work life, um, that those might be meant for evil by the enemy, but God will use them for good if you trust him in the midst of it. And I think one of the last two videos I did, um, we talked about a dream that I had, and I really felt the dream was particularly seasonal, even though it applied specifically to some, some things. Um, it was, I felt like it was really about the season. And, and in the dream, I was on the phone with another pastor, um, who lives in another state and I was talking to him and I was having a difficulty hearing him on the phone because there was a plane or a helicopter that was flying really low. It was making it hard for me, even in the house, the building I was in to be able to hear. Um, and I was explaining to the pastor that we live in a military town and that caused me to believe that we were in a time of warfare um, then there was a storm going on that was interrupting the phone call. It was causing um, interruptions in our signal. And then there were distractions that were coming in that dream as well. And so um, and we're going to talk extensively about 5783, the year that we're going into. But the fact that we are in this decade, um, the, the decade of the 80s is the decade of pay. And that pay means mouth, word communication, breath means to scatter. Like if you blow, you scatter things. And, and this whole entire decade, we have a war on communication. And so in this season, it's really important that we guard against um, allowing these things, such as warfare storms and distractions, which will come. We have to guard against those um, interrupting our communications 
with others. And in the dream also, I was either in an apartment or a hotel, but it was some form of communal living. So I had a, a room or an apartment and I came out into the hallway and I was interacting with others there. So it was communal living, which brings me to, to point four. We are, as we've been discussing at great length, we are moving into this great communion revival. And that is communion with the Lord and with the Holy Spirit, but it's also communion with one another. And so re remaining in that place of community and being, being really cautious not to allow these storms and distractions and warfare to interrupt that community. And again, in that dream, um, a gentleman came by, looked at these lamps I had, and um, the lamps weren't working. He went and he charged the lamps. And when he brought them back, he reminded me, you have to remember your covenant code in order to charge the lamps. And so obviously communion is all about covenant communal living with one another. It's all about covenant. So especially those that you are in covenant with, be sure and retain your connection and guard that fiercely and don't allow anything to distract from your connection in that. So we're looking at, um, we're looking at the year 5783, which is the year of pay gimel, right? You've heard that probably extensively. We're going to break it down a little bit, talk about some things um, that maybe you've heard and maybe some new things. So I want though to point out this um, this this symbolism here. Uh, you've, you're probably more familiar with those symbols I just showed you as being pay and gimel. This is some of the ancient Hebrew writings. Um, bef as the language and as the letters themselves evolved over time, they grew into what you just saw in that past screen. But this was the more ancient symbols. So pay was this thin, um, this thin oblong opening, and it resembled a mouth. And the reason I want to show you these is because it gives you an idea of the very most basic fundamental understanding of the letter uh, slash number, because it's both a letter and a number, it gives you an understanding of the symbol behind that letter. So pay is the mouth. So we know that this entire decade, and that's pay is what means 80, we're in 83. So this entire decade is about the mouth. It's about the words that we speak. It's about um, the things that we hear. It's about words coming against us. We are in a war on communication. And we're in a war, as we've discussed in previous videos, of being of accusation, of being accused by the words of the mouths of others coming against us and being used as weapons against us. So Gimel, the number three or the letter um, that would be given a G sound, G sound, Gimel is in fact um, the symbol of a foot. And so that's like the most basic fundamental image behind the numeral or the letter gimel. So that I think will help as we talk about some of the applications of what this season is about for you to understand what those letters really represent. And so, um, as we said, gimel is a symbol of a foot um, and it has certain meanings and and so you've probably heard most about gimel meaning camel. So that is one of the meanings of the, of the letter or numeral gimel. It also means to gather. It means to walk, obviously it's a symbol of a foot. And it also stands for pride. And so these are things that factor into the season that we are looking at ahead. So because of that, um, 5783, I believe, is a year to really put our foot down on some specific things that have been hindering our spiritual development. And it's a good time to really evaluate your walk, to evaluate your journey. Remember, gimel means walk as well, to evaluate your journey and make sure that the way you're walking aligns with the words that you've been speaking, right? Pay gimel. This is a time for your words 
and your walk to come into alignment together. So don't be condemned if you realize that perhaps you've not been in good alignment between the two, but do make sure that the words that the Lord has given you, make sure that those are, you're allowing those to speak into your, uh, your journey and to shift your direction. If the Lord has given you specific words, be sure that you're walking in such a way as to walk that out. So that is pay combined with gimel. That's the mouth and the foot working together because ultimately the truth is your words are going to direct your path. They are going to direct your footstep. And so this is where we need to put our foot down. And make sure, look at the words that you're speaking, especially in your casual conversation with others. It's those times that we're not thinking about what we're saying. We're just, um, we're just being, and we're just talking. And that can kind of be dangerous um, territory if we don't have a guard on our mouths. So make sure that the words that you're speaking, even in your most casual conversation, is that really where you want to go? Is what you're saying over your life, is what you're saying over your health, is what you're saying over your finances, is what you're saying over your children and your family and your state and your nation, are, are the things you're saying where you really want to see your body, your life, your finances, your children, your nation? Is that where you want to see them go? Because ultimately it will go in the direction you are speaking. You have more power in your words than the average person because you are endowed with the Holy Spirit of God within you. And so your words have weight. So be cautious about what you're giving your words over to. So I also really sense that um, this is a year to secure our borders. Um, the, the word my pastor has been given for this year is to possess the land. And I really, I really sense it's important right now that we strive to possess that which we already own. And um, there's a lot of things that we own, both naturally and spiritually, that we don't truly take possession of. And so in that, it's very interesting that I have felt the stirring in this year for an increased emphasis on prayer walking, which is odd. It's one of the most fundamental, basic elements of the prayer movement. And so to be talking about prayer walking seems strange. But Joshua 1.3 has really come to me this year, as we've been preparing for this next season ahead, that wherever the sole of your foot touches, the Lord says, I will give to you. And so it's important that we make sure we're walking our boundaries, that we are laying our foot on the territory and on the ground of what we already own, um, your city, your land. Are you occupying your own territory? Are you occupying your own land? And um, both through the words of your mouth and through your feet and through the place that your feet touches it. And this is a, this is a time to lay our feet on the ground and make sure that the words we're speaking are in, in alignment with what we want to see. I was asking the Lord about this. Um, um, like how do we pray for specifically like our city or our county? How do you want us to pray, Lord? And I really sense the spirit saying to me, well, what do you want to see? What do you want it to look like? And I know, obviously, it's not that we are um, um, just subjectively coming up with ideas of what we want. But in fact, the Lord is informing us. The Lord is giving us imagery and and um, revelation in our spirits of what he wants to do in the land and in that we speak it out so whatever it is that he is wanting to build this to come back to 5782 in this last year and and the lord really mentioned uh, has been working on me personally that each season builds on the other so it's not that 
most often we're not leaving a season. There are times most often we're not leaving a season for another, but we're building upon that season. So 5782 was the year to build the house with blessing and um, blessing. Barakah is one of the bet words. And it's the words of our mouth. A blessing is a spoken word over a situation or over a person or over a land. And so to build the house with blessing, we're still in that. So now we're combining this concept of building with blessing with our feet walking out that which we are speaking over the land. And so that can even be an action. So um, if we are speaking over our city, um, that, in fact, this is going to be a safe place. It'll be a place of prosperity. It'll be a place where um, people can, can build and grow and, um, and can grow businesses and such. Well, what are we doing then to help bring that to pass? How are we helping to facilitate it becoming a safe place, becoming a place of prosperity? What are we doing to help those that are perhaps in the lowest areas financially to be able to come up and to have opportunity to build, to have opportunity to create business. So it's combining our words with our walk in a new way, right? Um, so this is a year to secure our borders. And the Lord it took me back and he's taken me back several times in this past year to First Kings 2022. Let me read that to you real quick. So 2022 he was reminding me of this 2022 verse and the prophet came to um, actually to Ahab, the king of Israel. And it was after they had won a decisive battle, but the prophet came to him and he said, strengthen your position and see what must be done because next spring, the king of Aram will come to attack you again. So I, I believe it's Secure your borders is another word of saying strengthen your position and that there is warfare up ahead in this next year that we need to be um, we need to be strategically ready to be able to handle that warfare. So strengthen your position, secure your borders. And you do a lot of that by the words of your mouth and by the way you're walking and by where you um, where you claim with the sole of your foot. And you claim Joshua 1, 3, that, that you're walking it because you're occupying it, because you're taking that land. It, occupation is very important. I can tell you, even in like a physical building, if you're not occupying it, then you have to go in spiritually and you have to pray over it and you have to reoccupy the place that you've abandoned, that you've neglected. I've seen it in houses. I've seen it in buildings, um, definitely even in cities. If the people of God aren't occupying the land, then they have to come back in and displace the enemies once again, just like in the promised land, they had to displace enemies. And God said, I'm not going to drive everybody out at once or else the wild animals will come in and, and they will take over the territory. See, so it's important that whatever we win through war, we occupy so that it doesn't get occupied by other beings that then we have to kick out. Um, so anyway, the, um, what happened then in verse 23 of first Kings chapter 20 is that the, 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 the Kings that were coming against Israel said, well, their God is a God of the hills. So we'll fight them on the plains. And so there's, there's this thing going on right now that our enemies don't believe that God is the God of all creation. And that if they can just get the right, position, if they can just get the right inroads, if they can um, put the battle on the right front, that they can win. And because of that, because of that, we really are guaranteed victory. And because remember, another word for this season is pride. And that's the pride of our enemies rising up. And it's going to actually work in our favor because God will not be mocked. So this year, more so than ever, we really need to learn how to believe God for the impossible things. And one of the keys that Chuck Pierce has talked about in this season, which you've probably heard him discuss, is that this season is the war for divine recovery, and it's opening up new supply lines. And so we, we have to 
believe God for supply. And this is really, um, this is what contending for the supply lines is all about. It's because we actually, I said, we had to, we have to possess what we own. We already own the kingdom of heaven. Now, be not afraid, little flock, for it's the Lord's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. We already have the kingdom, but we have not truly possessed it. And so we've allowed ourselves to become dependent then on the world system and its supply. We have to learn how to tap into kingdom supply because eventually the earthly streams will run dry and will be the only ones with supply to offer or to give. So as I mentioned, there's a heightened emphasis this year on prayer walking. That's from Joshua 1.3. And we have to talk while we walk. It's important that we're exercising gimel and pay together, that we're speaking that which we want to see over the territory that we are in. So another gimel um, meaning is to gather. And so this is a, a year where it's really important that we do gather together with one another, particularly with those that you're in covenant with. Covenant is such a huge emphasis right now. Um, and But those that you're in covenant with, you have to be sure and gather, even if all you can do is gather on Zoom or a phone call or even a uh, a thread, um, a text thread or something, be sure and gather with those that you are in covenant with, that you are like-minded with in order to really um, derive strength from one another for the battles that we're facing right now to get direction, to get revelation for the days that are ahead. We, um, another scripture, another 2020 Three scripture and 2022 scripture that's been coming to me is second chronicles which um we looked at quite a bit in in um the year 2020 it's continued to be very relevant so verse 22 was as they began to sing and praise the lord set ambushes against the men of ammon and moab and mount seir who were invading judah and they were defeated <clears throat> verse 23 the men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they'd finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Why? They're supposed to be in covenant together, working together against, Israel, against Judah. But in fact, they ended up destroying one another. Why? Because of what happened in 2022, they began to sing and praise the, the people begin to give thanks to the Lord. And so right now and this year, it's really important that we continue to gather together in corporate praise and worship. And as we gather together in corporate praise and worship, we will see our enemies brought down. The Lord then will fight for us. But in the season of warfare, we have to be uh, very intentional to continue to gather. This is it's a key aspect of the season. We need one another. We need the revelation that comes from one another. We need the strategy that we can only get as a unit, as a body. We need the, the um, ecclesia to gather together because it's only when the ecclesia comes together, two or three, it doesn't have to be a lot, but two or three ecclesia come together. That's when the Lord shows up in their midst for the purpose of judgment. Read your Bible. <laughs> but when he comes and he shows up in our midst, it's for the purpose of judging. And so when we gather together, then verdicts are executed against the enemies of the Lord. And so remember, that's spiritual. Those are principalities, powers. Those are demonic beings. So it's judgment executed against them so that the people that are, in fact, um, under their, their unrighteous rule, um, the people that are, in fact, enslaved by them, so those people can go free. But it's only when we gather together and we worship the Lord and exalt him. When we exalt the Lord, then he is manifest in our midst and he releases his judgments. So 
And one of the other meanings then of Gimel is pride. This is a year to deal with the stronghold of pride, and we must do it in ourselves first. We have to, and, and that's why this John 2023 20, is such a big deal. So we release forgiveness to everybody that, that has any sort of sin or offense or owes any debt to us personally. This is, remember, the Shemitah season is a season to release debt. We have to release anyone um, whom is indebted to us in order for us to ever be released from debt. That's what the Lord says. Um, you forgive and I'll forgive you. But we have to forgive. We have to deal with the stronghold of pride within ourselves. Now, yes, this is a year of pride. So yes, we will be dealing with extensively the pride movement um, in this year. But the only way we can deal with that is through humility and forgiveness. That will position us to be able to see these captives set free so they can then say yes to the Lord so they can be set free themselves, right? So we have to come to a place of um, dealing with pride in ourselves so that we can deal with the stronghold of pride over the nation and all that that implies. So there you have it. Um, hope that that helps inform a little bit of the season that we're coming into. We'll uh, continue here. I don't know if it's next week. I'd have to look at the schedule, but we'll continue with the series on the Great Communion Revival. There's still more to dig into and talk about on that level, but have a wonderful Rosh Hashanah. Um, I don't know how you celebrate for me. I treat that very much like New Year's and I just um, seek the Lord in that time and ask him to clarify my walk, to clarify anything that needs, you know, where do I need to tweak what we're doing? Where do we need to maybe make adjustments to align ourselves more correctly with your plans and purposes, Lord? So, Father, I just pray that you would bring us all into a greater understanding of how to walk with you through this next season. I just, I just, this is odd. I just plead the blood of Jesus over the feet of all who are listening. I, that's what I hear you saying, Lord. And I just like the, um, just like the, the big toe of the priests were anointed before their service. I just pray in an anointing Lord on the feet of your people, that their walk would be holy and righteous that their walk would be aligned with you, that Lord, you would be that voice in their ear, um, telling them this is the way, walk in it, that you would direct and guide our steps in every way. I thank you, Lord, for a new season. Um, and I thank you, Lord, that really our victory is, ins is ensured, even though there is a battle ahead. I pray that you would strengthen us, that you would set our face like flint, that we would be obedient to you in these days, that we would bring you glory, Lord, and that we would see the beginning of the great harvest and people coming to you in mass, that we would be able to participate with you in this work in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you next week.